What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bruns and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Brun Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series. Today looking at Magic Stone. So to provide a little bit of context, I started this YouTube channel about a year ago with very little 5e experience. I know, ballsy, right? But my first seven videos were part of a series, The Seven Tactical Aspects of Combat, which is not a Dungeons and Dragons thing. It applies to everything in life. Anything that involves any kind of competition, sports, relationships, sales, everything. And so, you know, I felt pretty confident laying that stuff out without having a lot of Dungeons and Dragons experience. But my very next video, number eight, was a review of cantrips. And let's just say with more experience that my opinions have evolved a little bit on some of these cantrips. And in particular, Magic Stone I gave very short shrift to in that video because I wasn't aware of its benefits because they are extremely nuanced. And I first got clued into this when I started rolling with a lot of tiny servants. And it was pointed out to me, man, if you could cast Magic Stone, you could throw three of those things every round. And I was like, ooh, damn, that, that's really good. I have the tiny servants. I can't get Magic Stone, though. That's annoying. But yeah, Magic Stone, okay, it's better than I thought. And fast forward to today, where I have been playing in the Forge Concordance, a West March server, and just tons of adventurers, tons of DMs. Guess what? I added Magic Stone to my player, or to my character. Uh, you know, he's a warlock, and he has Eldritch Blast, but I also added Magic Stone because it's really good. And so now that I am more clued in to how good it is, I wanted to share it with you. So let's dive into this and break it down. So I've put the description of Magic Stone on the screen so that you can check it out. It's available to artificers, warlocks, druids, rangers, and nature clerics. And one of the nice things about it is that it's one of the only two cantrips in 5th edition that are a bonus action cast, Shillelagh being the other. That is obviously fantastic for action economy. And it's excellent for consistently, aggressively pre-casting, because it has a one-minute duration and no concentration, so many DMs will sign off on automatically pre-casting these during dangerous scenarios. You just declare this preparedness when entering the environment. I cast it every minute, and in my experience, most DMs are cool with that. So you can generally go into combat with Magic Stones already pre-cast. Magic Stones do magical bludgeoning damage, which is an elite damage type. Only 1.5% of creatures are resistant to it, and only one creature is immune. That's fantastic. And they'll do double damage to skeletons, and their synergy with the Crusher feet. So the fact that magic stones are magical bludgeoning is excellent. Now, the most obvious and visible problem with magic stone is that it doesn't scale at tier levels like the other attack cantrips do. However, it does create three magic stones per cast, even at level one, which creates the opportunity to offload them to other players or NPCs and thus generate even more damage than a different attack cantrip. Furthermore, even one stone is elite in tier 1 before the other cantrips upscale. A d6 plus 3 is the same average damage as a d12, with a lower minimum and less variability, so it's better. It does more average damage than Eldritch Blast or Firebolt, and it does so more consistently than another D12 cantrip, like Poison Spray or Toll the Dead. So as mentioned, Magic Stones can be offloaded to others who might otherwise lack a magical ranged attack option. It uses the caster's stats on attack and damage, so it's pretty good, even if they don't have very good stats. And this offers good synergy with Heavy Obscurement, as an attack roll option is required in those cases, which means that it's good for some classes that get few of such options, for example the Cleric. It also has amazing synergy with hirelings, minions, and NPC assistants who are normally useless. And as I mentioned before, it does have amazing synergy with three tiny servants or three animated dead. And do note that as I interpret it, the caster can use the bonus action to issue general orders. For example, when I cast Magic Stone, grab one and throw it at the nearest enemy. That would enable deployment without using the bonus action to command them. And that frees up the bonus action to actually cast Magic Stone. Now, I want to emphasize this is my interpretation. Of course, it's your DM's opinion that counts, but I think that you can sell it, and I think it makes sense. And Magic Stone has amazing synergy with Chain Lock Familiars, because these have attack options. The spell has a range of touch, which means that you can cast it through the familiar, and that gives the familiar a ranged option. 
You can get up to three attacks every two rounds if you have Investment of the Chain Master, and that is way better than no ranged attacks. Sometimes you just can't get into position to execute a melee attack, and you're going to want to have a ranged option. Note that it's not two attacks per round because Magic Stone does create a little bit of bonus action clog with the Investment of the Chain Master bonus action attack option, but still, I'll take three attacks every two rounds. Now, one nice thing about Magic Stone is that it can be used with a sling to increase its impact and to open up certain combos. For one, it'll increase your range from 60 feet to 30 120, and you can stack it with a magical sling, including the enhanced and repeating weapon infusions that artificers get. If you use a sling, it will combo with sharpshooter, it will combo with fighting style archery, and it will combo with any features that require a weapon. For example, sneak attack, eldritch smite, smite spells, battle maneuvers, or the swarms ranger abilities. Now do note that it does require a somatic component and the ability to touch the stones. So it might be difficult to deploy at low levels if you have a focus or weapon in one hand and a shield in the other hand, though you can touch the pebbles with the focus if you're offloading the attacks but still something to be aware of. Because of all that, casting through the familiar becomes very valuable. You're not going to need your hands, and you can use your familiar's hands to handle the stones. And speaking of which, it's technically not stones, but pebbles. And pebbles are technically small and smooth, and not every stone qualifies as a pebble. So if your DM is being exceptionally pedantic, he might say, no, you can't just pick up a rock off the ground and use it. It's not a pebble, and it hasn't been smoothed over by the constant running of water. In which case, bring them yourself, and don't expect to be able to find them as you go. So that's it. That's Magic Stone, a cantrip that is way better than I initially gave it credit for, and is so good that I actually added it to my own PC at level 4. So even though it starts to get a little bit long in the tooth, it was good enough for me to add, and so I just wanted to issue this correction. I feel so bad for using Magic Stone all the time after I said bad things about it in my cantrip video, so it's fixed. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronze Applestone. See you next time.